Hey everyone, it's John from Ride Upstate, and I have another reaction video for you. Today I am reacting to a video that just came out from Uber with their CEO, Dara Khosrow Shahi, and it's about some of the resources and benefits that they're going to be giving Uber drivers. Let's take a look at it. Hi, my name is Dara Khosrow Shahi, and I am the CEO here at Uber. And today I am so excited to share with you some new resources and partnerships that we hope will create more opportunities for you to help you reach your long term goals. Now we've spoken. So this is interesting to help us reach our long term goals. People have short term goals right now, which is like paying the rent and making enough money from this. <laughs> Let's go on. Spoken to drivers in roundtables, forums, and one-on-one -on -one discussions, and you've given us a lot of great feedback on how we can improve the driving and delivering experience. And we've used that feedback to make enhancements to the app, including better navigation, smoother pickups and drop-offs. So they're still promoting this change to the maps and that it's been better and smoother and things like that. And uh, granted, there is more information on the maps and that is very helpful. But there's still information that we need as drivers. We need all the information about every trip. If I'm going to pick someone up five minutes away, I want to know if they're going 10 minutes down the road or two hours down the road, because that does happen. And it really stinks when you get somewhere and you have to cancel on a rider because you were intending to be somewhere in the next 45 minutes, but they want to go two miles down the road, two, two, two hours down the road. So we need more information about each trip, Dara. Give us all of the information. I think we deserve it. And more detailed maps. But we've also heard from you that you want more than just a better app. You want a path to a better future. And you want to use Uber to help get you there. Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> Uber is side income for me. And based on your own statistics, most of the people who are on your platform do this part time. They have a full time job and they do this on weekends or in evenings. And I don't know where this statistic is coming from. He's not backing up his statistics and saying that we want to use Uber to reach our goals. Where's this coming from? I don't understand. He says it's coming from talking to other drivers, but okay. Is it really? I, I don't know. That's why I'm proud to introduce these free programs and resources free that can programs. help you learn new skills and unlock As long as you're gold or platinum or diamond. First, we partner with Rosetta Stone to help you master the language that you've always wanted to learn. We've heard from you that learning a new language, and for many around the world as English, is key to unlocking future career opportunities. Now, eligible drivers and delivery people around... Hear that? Eligible drivers and delivery people. Not all drivers and delivery people eligible. And the way they do that is with this little carrot and stick deal called gold and platinum and diamond levels. Not all drivers, only eligible drivers. And they do the same thing with the information on trips. They want you to meet a certain goals in order to unlock these features. It's not we deserve all the information, Dara. So, and, and it's also interesting that he doesn't mention what the eligibility requirements are in this video. Just that if you're eligible, it's available to you. On the globe, we'll have access to Rosetta Stone language learning courses, which can help you unlock your next step, as well as connect with your riders, your customers, and your community. Another new resource I want to... So I will say this, however... If you live in a community or near a community that has a group of people that have a predominantly second language, whether it's Spanish or French or Chinese, 
yes, it would be helpful. Being able to communicate with your riders is very important. Um, there are times when I pick up people around here, especially right now during the summer. Spanish is their first language. It's very difficult for them to speak English. And if I could speak Spanish, I think it would improve the experience for them and improve the experience for me. So why isn't this available to all drivers and riders? Why do you have to be eligible? And so most likely what it is is you have to maintain gold, which means you have to have 200 points in the uh, rating period and you have to have an 85% acceptance rate and less than 5% cancel rate. And you know what? In a lot of markets, that's just not possible. It's just not possible because of the garbage orders that people get, especially delivery drivers. They get these garbage orders and there's no way they can meet these eligibility requirements. So now as a driver, that might be who's doing rides, that might be a lot easier, but you know what? You're gonna put a ton of miles on your vehicle. And right now with the way gas prices are, I have no interest in trying to reach the gold level or whatever level I need to be at to meet these eligibility requirements. Yes, I have a car that gets really good mileage, but we're over $3 a gallon now. And the rates that we get paid aren't going up with the cost of operating our vehicles. Maybe that's something that you could do to help us reach the next step in our lives. I want to tell you about is the ability to request an achievement letter from Uber. The achievement letter is going to highlight how long you've been driving or delivering and the excellent reviews that you've received from your customers. You can be proud of the service you provide to your customers, and now you'll have it in writing from Uber. In some regions, we have even more resources to get. So this achievement letter, I, I really don't understand what, what this is all about. I guess if you were going on to drive professionally, it would be useful to have. Or if you were going into a like customer service type position. But I don't, I don't really understand that. I will tell you this. When it becomes available, I'm going to apply for my achievement letter because I'd like to see what's on it. You where you want to go. For example, in the US, we have a great partnership with Arizona State University to cover 100% of the tuition for you or an eligible family member across more than 100 degree programs. In Latin America, we partnered with the internet. Again, you have to meet certain eligibility requirements. It's not available to everyone. And again, he does not mention those eligibility requirements. This is somewhat, um, I don't want to say it's deceptive, but most drivers out there don't meet those requirements. International Finance Corporation to provide access to financial literacy courses to help drivers learn how to better manage their earnings. I they need this in the U.S. too. They really need this in the U.S. I encourage you to read more about what else is available in your area below. As the world starts to recover from COVID-19 and you consider what's the best path for you and your future, we want to make sure that you know how you can use Uber to help you get to where you want to go. On a okay, so I think this is a little tone deaf right here because the world is not recovering from COVID-19. In fact, what we're starting to see now is restrictions are coming back in place due to these various variants. And we're seeing that even though people are vaccinated, there are breakthrough uh, illnesses. There are people who are vaccinated who are getting sick. And now the CDC is recommending mask use indoors under certain situations. And we have companies who are actually closing their offices. Twitter said they are going to close down all of their offices and go 100% remote. What does that mean for drivers in New York and San Francisco? What it means is those people who were getting Uber rides, they're not going to take rides anymore. Now they might order food in, possibly. So people may need to shift to doing uh, food delivery. But here's a few suggestions for Dara 
before we get into his personal story, which, by the way, um, I think is great. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. For one thing, I think the primary thing that Uber needs to offer is insurance. They need to offer insurance. And if you want to say you have to meet eligibility requirements to get it, that's fine. Right now, if you deliver food in New York, you are not insured on Uber Eats. You are not insured. It's in their terms. If you go look at it, you're not insured. The insurance that they do provide you is so minimal. It's so minimal that it would not cover you in the event of an accident. Your, your car would be a total loss. Um, any injury to you would come off of your insurance. They only cover other vehicles and other people. You are not covered. And even then, that coverage is very limited. So rather than doing all of these things, how about Uber goes out and goes to an insurance company and says, hey, we have this many million drivers and we want to get them insured. And get us insured. Get us fully insured for the work that we're doing instead of us having to bear the burden of that. Now, the reason they don't do that is because they want to say that we're independent contractors. Fine. Then offer us a policy that we can buy into so that we can be insured. The second thing that you need to do is with gas prices going up the way they are right now, you need to start supplementing any trip over five miles um, with extra pay. Any trip over five miles with extra pay. Especially in markets like mine. The other day, I just took a guy. Uh, it was a 36-mile trip. We were on the road for about 44 minutes, somewhere around there. And, you know, I probably I burned a gallon of gas in my car. Let's, let's just say that, roughly. Um, I have a Prius, so. But I should get supplemental pay for a long trip like that. It is criminal right now that these companies are continuing to keep their per mile rates where they are as gas prices go up. Expenses are going up for drivers and we are, we're dealing with the brunt of it and we're not getting any more pay. All right, let's get into Dara's story here. On a personal note, these programs are especially important to me because of my own experiences. I actually immigrated to this country in the 70s from Iran, and myself and my family were lucky enough to get out safely and incredibly lucky to have an uncle who lived in the U.S. who opened up his doors to us to stay with him as we made the transition. And I still remember early on when I went to school, even though I knew some English, the kids spoke so quickly and it was so hard to understand and keep up with them. And the process of my learning English was such an important part of my fitting in and really starting my life in America as an immigrant. So I understand how. I really like this. Uh, listen, I love this story. Um, kid comes over from Iran and becomes a CEO. It's a great story. It really is, right? I won't say it's a rags to riches story because I, I'm not sure if it is a rags to riches story. But it's a great story. It is the story of America. People coming from foreign countries to earn money and make a better life for themselves and their families. Part of the problem with this is that pe these people are coming to America and they're getting on platforms like Uber and Lyft and DoorDash. And if they get into a situation where their car is damaged or they're robbed or they're carjacked or they're shot, or they're killed, Uber doesn't take responsibility for that. Uber doesn't have to provide insurance. Uber doesn't have to provide um, health care if you're injured on the job. And it's, it's taking advantage of these people who are doing the same thing that your family did, Dara. They want to come to the U.S. to make a better life for themselves. 
but they end up getting carjacked and killed or shot or their vehicle stolen. Uh, they get spit on, they get beat up, they get sexually assaulted, and Uber takes no responsibility for it. Um, they talk about making the platform safer, but don't require ID from riders. Anyone can get on the platform with a gift card and a smartphone. And that's scary, folks. That's really scary. And something needs to change. So, Dara, my challenge to you, if you or anyone from Uber is watching this, is to actually make this a safer platform so that these people who are coming to the United States, just like your family did, just like your family did, Dara, so that they can be safe working on your platform. How powerful opportunities like this, like learning a new language, going to school, or getting a new job can be. I hope these partnerships and resources will help you reach your own long-term goals. Finally, I just want to express my sincere thanks. Despite a very difficult year, you've kept your communities moving and helped cities reopen. Going forward, I'm excited to help you get to where you want to be, both on and off the road. Thank you. Okay, so Dara, uh, like I said, we need more pay. We need to be able to buy into insurance on your platform. I'm not saying buy it for every, every driver, but if me as a driver, I want to work on Uber, I should have the option of purchasing the insurance that I need to make sure that I don't lose my car if I'm in an accident. All right, I'm fortunate enough that I'm in the position where if I totaled my car, um, I could replace it. You know, honestly, I, I could replace it. But do I want to go through the hassle of all that? No. So please help us with insurance. Increase the per mileage rates in markets. And if we are going uh, more than five miles on a trip, I think there should be an additional uh, bonus given to a driver for long distance drives. It is very difficult right now for a lot of people, for most people out there who are relying on Uber for income. It's difficult for them to actually make money. If they're in a market like mine, I mean, I get pickups sometimes that are 10, 15 miles away. Do I take them? No, I don't. I'm not going to drive 10 or 15 miles to pick someone up only to take them two miles down the road. Okay. We need this information. We need to be able to make informed decisions so that we are not driving our vehicles into the ground. We've all seen the videos on social media of someone driving 15 or 20 miles to pick someone up and they're going two miles down the road when that person probably could have walked there in the time that the car got there. Now, I understand everyone, someone might be sick, someone might not be able to walk that far. I get it. But we should not be sending these trips to drivers that far away. And or we should be informing every single driver, hey, this person's only going two miles down the road, so you're going to make $3.66. All right. And finally, just to wrap things up, safety is super important. We need to start requiring, these platforms need to start requiring identification for people on the platform. You need to be able to provide positive identification in the form of a passport or federal or state ID. That's just all there is to it. I should not be able to sign up for this platform with a gift card that I bought with cash and a, use a burner smartphone and an email address that is throwaway and be able to get on the platform. It just shouldn't happen. It just should not happen. All right. My name is John from Ride Upstate. And um, if you like these kind of reactions, hit the like button below. If you like this kind of content and you want to be notified of it, hit the subscribe button and then ring that bell and maybe you'll get notified. I don't know. Until next time, remember that just because you're in a small market 
doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.